Lately the words original and unrestored are used to advertise classic cars. What it actually means is you leave too much money for it and you have to restore it yourselves. Now, don't get me wrong. I do appreciate a good, original, gracefully aged car. The point is, a 911G with, say, 100,000 kilometers on the clock, perhaps even from a country requiring road salt. This is how they look. Original, unrestored and rubbish. So this is yet another film about wheelhouse restoration. The usual wear, some modest damage, one week of after hours and a weekend and it looks great again. Unlike in the first films on the topic, I'll this time also cover the reassembly of the fender so that we get nice tight and even gaps. This headlight pot had been replaced at some point and to protect it, you know what they did? They smeared grease on it. No further painting, no further sealing, just grease. I mean, it's leaving me speechless. All these believers and their phantasms. Ah, this is the best product on the market. I got it from someone who really knows. It's a bit like someone recommends a palm cream to the guy and he puts it in his ears and smears it in his eyes. When the whole thing was cleaned up in a way that I was able to touch it again without sticking to it and without vomiting when looking at it, I discovered this minor rust issue. It's a rather easy thing to repair, because let me tell you one thing about welding. It's all about the gaps. If you're confident to cut sheet metal in a proper dimension, welding, as such, is a piece of cake. And one even doesn't have to be super precise because the panel will be shaped as it goes in. This ridiculous pigtail will become the new fender. Well, parts of it.
When a welding spot is put towards the end of a seam, it's a bit prone to leaving a half-circled hole. One good way to keep the melted material from spattering off is supporting it with a copper plate. Unlike in this edit, filling up the seam with spots I work very slowly to keep low the overall heat that goes into the panel. It's astonishing how close one can work towards the painted areas without damaging them. When the first set of spots is done, some grinding normally reveals sections that haven't been welded through properly. So a couple of more spots will finish it off. As always, I'd much appreciate if you'd send me a like or comment and recommend the channel to a couple of friends. You know, I'm not really hoping to make this channel huge. It's just that if you make an effort to make things nice, it's always cool if people cherish it. What follows is my usual procedure of coating with Brunox, body sealant, stone guard and two to three layers of paint. I basically believe that all material that survives some heavy wire wheeling, chiseling and hammering is strong enough to stay on the car and keep protecting it.
this panel, of course, has been harmed by rust, and I'm always trying to balance the effort, cost and benefit of tearing the car apart. Here I came to the conclusion to leave it together, as I guess that most of these very thick panels are still solid enough to serve another 30 years. I'm using Overtrol to stabilize and isolate the rusty bits, and the reason why I prefer it over Brunox in this case is because I have confidence in its higher penetration. It's more like a gut feeling, you know. The gray stuff is just normal two-component filler to make sure that further paint will connect properly. The sealing tape I used is the usual traditional butyl material which has been used for that purpose since the beginnings of car production. Once the fender is brought on, it will still allow some millimeters of play in order to get the gaps right. And believe it or not, these fenders actually fall in place without too many issues. I'll be showing that uncut in the coming minute. The fender will be supported by the tape long enough to get yourself a screw and a ratchet and the first screw to be tightened will already be responsible for the biggest part of the final positioning. It's not entirely without challenge to stitch through the butyl tape and get grip in the speed nut. So I first burn a hole in the tape using the soldering iron, then I beat on it and then I yell at it and then it works. Jetzt sage ich los, ey. was soll das? With the first screw pre-tightened in a way that it still leaves some room for adjustment, the fender needs to be forced in the desired position while the screw is fully tightened. This is the reason why you gotta have an enormous belly to become a successful Porsche mechanic, as you can see.
just like Porsche did, I then use body sealant and stone guard to seal in the speed nuts and everything gets some nice layers of paint which looks great but also increases the material's durability. The crevice between headlight port and fender deserves some grease product because with the rubber seal on it's going to become a kind of cavity. Reinstalling the trunk seal, please do me the favor and don't use new glue on top of the old one. There's good stuff on the market to remove it. And if a painter at some point painted over old glue, I suggest you go there and shoot him. I'm starting to apply glue in the lower left corner and work myself around the trunk edge by edge. At the left, right and lower edge, I ignore the instructions of the glue to be applied on both sides and flashed off because regarding strength I never had problems. Regarding spoiling glue all over the place, however, I did. The only exemption is the upper edge. At all the others, the frame holds in place the seal while the glue is curing. At the upper one it doesn't really. So I apply glue at both sides, wait 10 minutes and press it on. <laughs> 